This year, we sustained some losses to the community. I'm sure I'm not the only one, especially now that we're back in this space, who notices who isn't here as we come back together. Places that people used to sit, faces that used to greet us as we came in. One of those we lost was Shirley Gibson. And in preparing for the service that celebrated her life, her father, the Reverend Gordon Gibson, told the story of coming to visit Shirley when she had just moved to San Francisco after graduating from Reed College and how she had just started coming to this church and he was very excited that she was going to UU Church again and how she told him when he came with her to church that she, who was only, what, 22, 23 at the time, had only been in the church for a few months or so it seemed, that she'd been made chair of the annual giving campaign. <laughs> and her dad said, I think maybe to himself and not out loud, what the hell do you know about fundraising? <laughs> but she did a great job. Uh, she always did, becoming, I think, one of the youngest board chairs ever. I think Linda Anger beat Shirley, becoming the, actually the youngest board chair that we know of in the history of the church. And so it seemed gorgeously fitting this year to have two of our young adult leaders, Sam King and Wonder Dave, two brilliant, lovely human beings who so many of us know as their presence in worship as worship associates to serve as our co-annual giving chairs this year. So I wanna welcome Sam and Wonder Dave and ask you to put your hands together and welcome them too. Uh, uh, it's, it's really lovely to see you all in person. I don't know. Um, yay, I'm super happy about it. Uh, and it's also lovely to be with all of you uh, who are at home joining us via live stream. Uh, I am so happy we've had this team who has been able to put this together so incredibly well for us. Um, and Sam and I are really excited to be leading the annual giving campaign this year uh, when we get to step into the next chapter of life. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about myself if you don't know already. Um, by trade, I am a stand-up comedian and a live event producer. Uh, and when the pandemic hit, I was unemployed. Um, that was... There was no job for me any longer. Uh, until a friend of mine who knew I had done live event production reached out and asked if I wanted to use the skills I had in some other way. Uh, and thus began my work in October of 2020, uh, running COVID testing sites around the Bay Area. Uh, I am more upset than anyone else that those skills are related, but here we are today. <laughs> Um, I've had a front row seat uh, on what some of these last two years have asked of us. Uh, there were days we tested over 1,500 people. All of our staff were at risk, especially before we had vaccinations. Uh, it was a huge struggle, very stressful, and I saw so much bravery. Um, and it, it wasn't just me that had made that career shift. I had other event producers alongside me um, and so much community getting us all through an incredibly trying time. My work wasn't on the front line, but I had just started a job in political tech before the pandemic, and now we're getting folks to do friends and family outreach to vaccine-hesitant folks in addition to get out the vote work. There's been a lot of struggle, a lot of hardship these past two years, but I've also seen some silver linings and possibility. And it's the same with the church. Struggle and hardship and also silver linings and possibility. It is all of us with the staff who have seen it through to where we are, finding new ways to be together, expanding our live stream virtual ministry to reach out to over 730 subscribers. Uh, subscribers. Uh, side note, the church has never actually asked anyone to subscribe to their YouTube channel, uh, but as a performer, like and subscribe. What are you doing? It's amazing. <laughs> um, taking almost all of our Sunday offerings uh, throughout the pandemic uh, for outside groups who needed us, uh, Host, hosting our unhoused neighbors this last month for additional time because they needed us to. Uh, yeah, we're very excited. You can applaud for that. It's great. I'm thrilled. Um, uh, 
because that's what churches should do, my friends. Um, these are just some of the ways we have met the challenges of these times without letting go of a single staff member. And this last year, with rentals again reduced to a fraction of pre-pandemic times, we will make it through whole, but only because you all answered the call to uh, a sacrificial level of giving. Last year, you all pledged $841,000 to keep this community and this institution whole and safe. Thank you for that incredible stretch and act of selflessness and commitment. This year, we are hoping to get rentals up. Susie Bernahola has been doing amazing work with folks who want to use our space. And we don't expect, even with her magic, that we will be where we ideally would like to be. We also know that many of you cannot meet the level of giving that you made last year for a second year in a row. So what we are hoping is that each of you will do what you can. We think that those of you who gave generously last year and can continue to do so, should do so. And those who need to step down their giving uh, in order to take care of their own urgent needs should also do so. And those of you who are new among us, some of you out there that we may not even know, will be able to step into that commitment to give so that we have a chance of meeting our goal this year, which is $750,000. 750,000 will allow us not to lay off any staff, to keep our basic programming and building expenses paid to do required maintenance and finish a few improvements, and to increase slightly the funding that we have for our social justice work. It's tight, it's close, it's a responsible budget for maintaining our strengths. And we appreciate your efforts to help us meet it, but it will take all of us to do it. It's not a given. When I came to my first service at UUSF four years ago, I wasn't exactly sure what to expect. Uh, I can say now that I've been delighted to find a community of people interested in both personal growth uh, and the well-being of the community at large. When the church adopted the eighth principle, I was delighted to see this community work towards change to create a more just and equitable world. The commitment of leaders and lay people within this organization to actually take steps to dismantle white supremacy, including our own unconscious biases, within the congregation and in the world at large has been delightful to see blossom. Though I was admittedly slow to become a member of the church officially, two years is a reasonable trial period. Uh, <laughs> I am proud to be I, I am proud to be more involved in the church today. Uh, I will be increasing my own don donation this year uh, because it turns out managing COVID test sites pays better than being a comedian, who knew? <laughs> um, and I am in a better financial place now. Uh, so I am, I'm thrilled to be able to do this uh, because I know that the world does not simply become a better place on its own, it does so because people make it happen. And I believe with all my heart that UUSF is filled with people committed to making the world better. It's why I decided I belonged here. My involvement didn't just happen magically though. I stepped up to the plate because I was asked to join by people in this community, people like Sam and Vanessa and Joe. I was asked to join groups like the Young Adult Program, asked to protest, asked to be involved in just and charitable causes, asked to become a worship associate. And so today, it's my turn to do the asking. And I am asking all of you to help fund the good works of this church with your time, effort, and pocketbooks. Yeah. Many of you have seen me as well here as a worship associate. You've already heard that uh, I care about our social justice work, the fact that we are one of relatively few sp spaces in the world that gets people to actually enact their values in the world, our values as Unitarian Universalists. Many of you have seen me in Sunday school spaces. You've already heard me talk about supporting the next generation, teaching them some of the things that I wish I knew at their age. But what's really important is the community. I'm lucky in a lot of ways, but this pandemic has still been rough. And when I felt lonely, when I felt at my wit's end, and when I really needed it, this community was here for me. And I want to be here uh, for UUSF, when UUSF needs me as well. So because I am fortunate enough to be in a stable position financially and because this community means a lot to me, last year I increased my pledge uh, and this year I'm increasing my pledge by an additional 50%.
and I ask you to look at your values, what this place, this community means to you, what you want to put out into the world, what foundation you want to set for the next generation, and please give as generously as you can to get us through this time, all the way through. Sam and I will be outside at coffee hour. We have pledge forms. Uh, today, the first pre uh, 30 people who pledge uh, get succulents, those plants that thrive through hard times. Uh, and if you pledge by next Sunday, March 13th, you'll be included in a raffle prize uh, of a three-night stay at Marty Vanderlyn's Lake Tahoe vacation home. And for everyone who pledges, we ask you to take a leaf and write your name on it and put it up on our forest wall in the gallery. We also invite you to take a pen and write on the path that is on the bulletin board some of what this community has meant to you this last year. And there's cake. Thank you. In this journey through the forest, this path that unfolds, unfurls, in twists and turns as we go, we've been surprised by beauty, warmed in sunlight and caught our breath in the clearings, weathered storms, been changed by what we've experienced, but it is the companionship of all of us along the way that's gotten us through. Thank you all for that. Thank you for making this place possible, this place where we can find that community possible. And cheers as we go on this journey through the forest forward together and see you all at coffee hour. <laughs> Thank you both. Our offering, you can, those of you here, you can prepare it for when we leave. Um, those of you at home, you can use our online giving portal, just mark it for today's special offering. And the date, March 6th, will go to help Ukrainian refugees through the International Rescue Committee. Thank you in advance for your generosity. <laughs>